Is it just me, or have you noticed that despite the constant media doom and gloom over the last few months about the housing market and its impending collapse, it's never really happened? <laughs> the stats on this topic are misleading and confusing to say the least, coupled with the fact that sensationalism sells newspapers, and YouTube videos for that matter. <laughs> You'd be forgiven for being lost on what's actually going on. I actually made this video back in July 2022, so nine months or so ago, about the affordability crisis in the housing market, and nothing has changed since then except more soaring inflation, countless interest rate hikes, and a few new prime ministers. Actually, when you think about it, quite a bit has changed, hasn't it? <laughs> but interestingly, I concluded in that video that I thought house price growth would likely stall and slow down, but I remain to be convinced that a crash was coming. And here we are, and I don't think I was a million miles off. Makes a change. Where's my missus? Uh, we need to mark this day. Hey, I was right about something. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, me too. Let's start this video with some facts, some actually concrete things that we know to be true before we start trying to cut through the stats that throw us off the scent. The first fact is that prior to the pandemic, we've had 10 years of house prices rising, as shown by this graph here. And the reason this is relevant is because it gives us context. You need to understand that house prices are high, really high. So a fall in house prices will only undo some of the astronomical growth that we've had over the last 10 years. Bear that in mind when people are talking about a complete collapse. The truth is that even a crash of 15 or 20%, which is what many have predicted for 2023, would actually only reset house prices to around 2020 pre-pandemic levels. Starts to give the whole story a bit more context, doesn't it? Another thing which is worth noting as a fact is that the situation we find ourselves in now is not a 2007-8 crash scenario. That turmoil was caused by a banking system lending money to anyone that asked for it. And although people point out that the subprime mortgage market that crashed the whole party only represented around 13% of the overall picture, and it still made it all tumble down like a house of cards. House of cards, get it? <laughs> okay, I can assure you the regulatory changes that have since been brought in to ensure this doesn't happen again means our whole banking system and the borrowing people have is on a much surer footing. What this means is that even if people are squeezed hard, and make no mistake, they are being squeezed hard with this current cost of living crisis, I think there will be in fact less people forced to sell in distress situations as hopefully if the system has worked, the borrowing they've got is likely to be more affordable than some of the deals arranged back in 2007. It was means tested for affordability much better when the mortgage was taken out in the first place than it might have been pre-08 crash. However, a little bit of recent right move research that caught my attention that was done by YouTuber Darren from Honest Money shows that in his local area of Kent, out of 100 listings, over half of them, 54 to be precise, have reduced their asking prices in an attempt to push a sale through. Not necessarily conclusive evidence on its own that the wheels are about to fall off, but it is an interesting stat, as it's a March change from 12 to 18 months ago for sure, where prices were only going up. You see, the reason research like that is interesting to me is because most stats and measures that you'll see published are always, by their very nature, backwards looking. And often there's a time lag, so it doesn't always tell the real story. Take this for example, the Case-Shiller Index, an index from Standard & Poor's with data calculated all the way back to January 1987. It looks at US house price data and is often a measure people look at when trying to assess the health of the US housing market. As good as it is, there's about a two to three month lag in the figures coming through, so it's not bang up to date. And what this means is that although this indicator has ticked upwards recently, showing house prices actually rose slightly in March, much to many people's surprise, 
there are many that are keen to point out that they still think more pain is on the way and to be very wary in thinking that the correction is over. There is one big thing that may just stop house prices crashing, however, and I think it's something people might be forgetting about, and it's a political thing. We have a general election coming up in 2025, and it's a pretty well-trodden path that a government rarely gets re-elected if the housing market is collapsing and the economy is generally in tatters. So what does this mean? Well, we'd like any market, it's reliant on two factors, supply and demand. We all know we have a well-established supply problem. The target set out in the 2019 Conservative Manifesto was for 300,000 homes a year to be built by the mid-2020s. And as you can see from this graph, they fall short consistently, and by quite some way, and continue to do so. It's actually now felt that more like 400,000 homes a year is what's actually needed. That's not an easy fix for a whole host of reasons and a whole other topic for another day, but because this is so difficult to solve, it's easier to manipulate the other side of the equation, demand. From stamp duty holidays to tax incentivised savings schemes, the list goes on. Governments are great at papering over the real problems in the housing market and keeping demand pumping no matter what. And we're already seeing signs that this might happen again. Rishi Sunak is rumoured to be considering bringing back the help to buy scheme, all in an attempt to keep people buying houses to prop up a troubled market. Because honestly, that's all that matters and influences the value of any asset going up and down in value, supply and demand. Just consider demand for a moment. There's not enough houses. Here in the UK, home ownership is still very much the dream for most people. And ultimately, what's the alternative? Renting? Well, the soaring cost of rent is its own massive problem. Analysis shows that asking rents on new listings are up by almost a third since 2019, and some people are facing increases of up to 60%. Prices in 48 council areas are now classed by the Office of National Statistics as unaffordable when compared with average wages. People need to live somewhere, and if people are going to have to spend the same amount in rent, if not more, than they would for an equivalent mortgage payment, most people are going to opt for the mortgage payment in order to get on the ladder. Assuming they can get the deposit and other costs together, of course, and yeah, that's a big assumption, I know. All in all, I think long-term demand is here to stay, and ultimately this is why we haven't really seen the crash everyone has been predicting. Yet, anyway. And if it does, it will recover and go on to set new record prices again at some point in the future. Don't forget, if house prices are falling, lots of people that just wanted to move simply won't sell. And if less people are forced to sell due to having a better financial situation they were forced to be in prior to getting the mortgage in the first place, after those lessons learned from 0708, these are factors that all plays into demand's hands. The truth is, Many millennials and aspiring first-time buyers will be jumping up and down, hoping for a crash to come, so their dreams of getting on the ladder might actually become a reality. Crashing house prices is only a disaster for investors, who will get less sympathy anyway, but let's not forget anyone who is sadly forced to sell due to their circumstance. Many will argue any crash will be less of a disaster and more of a return to fair prices in a market that's gone too mad for too long. So yes, it's confusingly reported on and it's hard to say what the next 3, 6, 12 months hold. You'd be forgiven for having no idea whether you should set fire to your house and abandon it or buy three more, but don't be bamboozled by negative press. If you're happy in your home and can afford the mortgage payments, even if you've had to make some adjustments to how you spend your money recently, then a fall in the value of your home should only be a problem on paper and one you can simply ride out. I think it's hard to make a case against property over the long term. We're a small island here, not building enough houses quickly enough, and the price of any asset is always driven by supply and demand. Here's that video I mentioned earlier looking at the affordability crisis and whether the average person can buy the average home, which created some excitement in the comments. See you over there.